Who is my brother and sister? 1 John 4, 11 through 21. Merle Life Group, May 17th, 2020. Today we continue in our study in the book of 1 John. Uh, some of you may have noticed that I changed the title of today's lesson from the title assigned by the church. However, we are staying with the same assigned scripture verses. Let's read the scriptures first, then afterward you'll understand the change in our title for today. Dear friends, since God so loved us, we also ought to love one another. No one has ever seen God, but if we love one another, God lives in us and his love is made complete in us. This is how we know that we live in him and he in us. He has given us his spirit, that would be his Holy Spirit. And we have seen and testify that the Father has sent his Son to be the Savior of the world. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. And so we know and we rely on the love God has for us. God is love. Whoever lives in love lives in God and God in them. This is how love is made complete among us so that we will have confidence on the day of judgment. In this world, we are like Jesus. There is no fear in love. Perfect love drives out fear because fear has to do with punishment. The one who fears is not made perfect in love. We love because he first loved us. Whoever claims to love God yet hates his brother or sister is a liar. For whoever does not love their brother and sister whom they have seen cannot love God whom they have not seen. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. The scripture that we just read, they're, they're familiar scriptures. Uh, we read in 1 John two weeks ago, some similar scriptures. So I thought that today we would focus on the last verse that we just read. Let's look at it again. And he has given us this command. Anyone who loves God must also love their brother and sister. If God gave us the command to love our brothers and sisters, we might be thinking, what if I don't have any brothers or sisters? Is God talking about our biological brothers and sisters or does he mean something else? We find in the New Testament that the apostles often address the new Christians as dear brothers and sisters. It would seem correct to believe that the apostles called them brothers and sisters because they all shared the same heavenly father. That brings up the next question, at what point did they become brothers and sisters? Again, it seems to be correct to believe that they became brothers and sisters when they accepted Jesus as their Lord and Savior. We often use the term they were born again since that was, the, was what Jesus told Nicodemus that he must do. I believe that as soon as one becomes a born again believer that they are immediately become part of the family of God, brothers and sisters. Today, you often hear them referred to as brothers and sisters in Christ. But then Jesus said it just a little differently. Jesus said in Matthew, he said, For whoever does the will of my Father in heaven is my brother and sister and mother. Okay, so which is it? Do they become our brothers and sisters when they become Christians? 
or when they do the will of God, like Jesus just said. I don't know that we will find a definitive answer in the scriptures, but it should it make any difference anyway? Maybe we should read again one of the verses we read earlier and see if it can help us. If anyone acknowledges that Jesus is the Son of God, God lives in them and they in God. That would make him or her our brother or sister. Does that mean we are to treat non-believers with less, less love and respect than we do believers? Of course not, but we are to have a special bond with our Christian brothers and sisters. There are many different groups that share a common bond, like the firefighters and the policemen. I think that the firemen and the policemen have a strong sense of bonding. It's like a strong brotherhood, not leaving out women, for they are included. It just happens to be the phrase that is most often used, brotherhood. There are many other groups of people that seem to bond together as well. Let's take doctors and nurses. They share a common bond. Life groups share a common bond that I think should be one of the strongest along with Christian brotherhood. So what should our Christian brotherhood look like and how should we act? First of all, this bonding of believers in like brotherhood should cross all barriers such as race, previous religious backgrounds, rich or poor. Jesus said, And Jesus said to him, You shall love the Lord your God with all your heart and with all your soul and with all your mind. This is the great and first commandment. And a second is like it. You shall love your neighbor as yourself. Okay, so now we're looking at two different terms. We're looking at brothers and sisters, and we're looking at our neighbor. We need to determine who is our neighbor. Isn't it interesting that a teacher of the Jewish law asked Jesus this very same question? Who is my neighbor? Let's turn to Luke 10 and let's read about this. On one occasion, an expert in the law stood up to test Jesus. Teacher, he asked, what must I do to inherit eternal life? What is written in the law, Jesus replied. How do you read it? He answered, love the Lord your God with all your heart, with all your soul, with all your strength, and with all your mind, and love your neighbor as yourself. You have answered correctly, Jesus replied. Do this, and you will live. But he wanted to justify himself, so he asked Jesus, And who is my neighbor? In reply, Jesus said, A man was going down from Jerusalem to Jericho when he was attacked by robbers. They stripped him of his clothes, beat him, and went away, leaving him half dead. A priest happened to be going down the same road. And when he saw the man, he passed by on the other side. So too, a Levite, when he came to the place and saw him, passed by on the other side. But a Samaritan, as he traveled, came where the man was. And when he saw him, he took pity on him. And he went to him and he bandaged his wounds, pouring on oil and wine. Then he put the man on his own donkey, brought him to an inn, and he took care of him. The next day, he took out two denarii, and he gave them to the innkeeper. Look after him, said, and when I return, I will reimburse you for any extra expenses you may have. Which of these three do you think was a neighbor to the man who fell into the hands of the robbers? The expert in the law replied, the one who had mercy on him. Jesus said, 
go and do likewise. Did you notice that Jesus did not actually answer the question of who is my neighbor? I believe that Jesus had a reason for that. We are not to choose who is to be our neighbor and who is not, but show love and concern and passion for anyone, especially when someone is in need. The Apostle Paul said it this way. He said, there is neither Jew nor Greek. There is neither slave nor free. There is no male or female for all. You are all one in Christ. James says that we should show no favoritism among our brothers and sisters. Let's read it in James chapter 4. He said, my brothers and sisters, believers, in our glorious Lord Jesus Christ, must not show favoritism. Suppose a man comes into your meeting wearing a gold ring and and fine clothes, and a poor man in filthy old clothes also comes in. If you show special attention to the man wearing fine clothes and say, here's a good seat for you, but you say to the poor man, you stand there or you sit on the floor by my feet. Have you not discriminated among yourselves and become judges with evil thoughts? Do you think that Jesus loved everyone? I believe he did. Jesus may not have loved their actions or their wrongdoings, but I believe that he still loved everyone. What I'm about to say next is not proven in Scripture, but is the teacher's opinion based on what is written in the Scripture about the term brothers and sisters and our neighbor. I believe that we have a certain bond with our brothers and sisters in Christ, and I'll, I'll talk about that more in detail later. And I believe that our neighbors are any human beings that are in need. This may not be exact, but probably close enough. Let's talk about bonding with brothers and sisters. Does Jesus have a group of brothers and sisters? Yes, he chose 12 disciples. Did Jesus have a smaller, close group within the 12 disciples? Yes, he had an inner group, Peter, James, and John. We also read in the scripture where Jesus' followers were called disciples. So now here's a larger group of brothers and sisters that share a common bond. For Jesus, his special bonding with brothers and sisters might look like this. First, his inner circle of very close brothers and sisters, Peter, James, and John in this case, Jesus could confide confide in these three. He could ask for prayer from these three. He could share a very unique relationship. His 12 disciples, they too were very close to Jesus, and he had a special bond with them also, but not quite as close as with the three. And then his church, those believers that followed him, they also shared a common bond. Now, how can we apply what we've learned from the example that Jesus set? I believe we can. Number one, have a close inner group of friends with whom you can trust, pray with, and even request spiritual advice. Secondly, it is good to have a little larger group, such as your life group members. In a life group, we have brothers and sisters in Christ that we can study the Bible with, worship together, pray for each other, share meals with, and just have a wonderful relationship with. Thirdly, there's moving outwardly might be the church membership. You may not get to know them personally. 
You can certainly worship together with them. You can pray for each other and join in with many other church-wide activities with these. And a fourth one, one more level might be brothers and sisters all over the world. There is still a strong bond among brothers and sisters that love God and serve him. Lake Point Church has reached all over the globe to help plant new churches. We should continue to pray for these new churches. But what about the rest of the world? We need to have love, concern, passion for them as well, or how else will they come to know Jesus Christ as Lord and Savior? If you're viewing today's lesson and you do not belong to a life group, I would encourage you to find one in your church and become a member. If you do not belong to a church and you live in the Rockwall, Texas area, you can contact Lake Point Church and they will send you some information through the mail. The Murrow Life Group at Lake Point Church in Rockwall, Texas has 54 members, 17 couples, and 20 singles. We are 60 years of age and over we meet on Sunday mornings at 9.30 a.m. in room A116, located on the first floor. <laughs> that is when the pandemic is over. You can find a list of all the lessons taught in the last three years by logging on to our class website, MerleLifeGroup.com. Just click on any lesson to watch the video. For additional information, send me an email at wallytex at aol.com. Remember to treat everyone as your neighbor. You just might be their last chance to know Jesus. Whoever loves his brother lives in the light. Have a blessed week. God bless each one of you. Please stay safe.